Good evening, class of 2020, hot dog, friends and families. It's a great pleasure to be here with you this evening. Tonight, you are part of the 34th annual Senior Honors Banquet and the first ever virtual banquet. Thank you for joining us and celebrating some amazing hot dogs. The spring of 2020 isn't anything that any of us could have imagined, but each of you that we recognize here tonight have overcome challenges that the world has placed in front of you. Tonight is about you. It's a moment for you and your families to sit back in awe of all of that you have accomplished. You are truly some of the best students that Frankfurt High School has ever seen. Take a moment and let that soak in. That you are one of the top 10 students in your class. That you are a class officer that has served your class or that you have been specifically chosen by a department in our school to highlight your accomplishments. All of those are very serious awards and we could not be more proud. Parents and families, this is a great moment of pride for each of you as well. While these fine students muscled through the academics, you were the support system. Maybe you were the ride to the study group, the holder of the flashcards, the note on the lunchbox, but undoubtedly the ones who offered support when things got difficult. These students wouldn't be here without you, and we thank you. Teachers, oh teachers, you are the reason that the students have found this outstanding level of success. You pushed, you prodded, you believed that this fine group of ladies and gentlemen could be extraordinary, and so they are. And thank you students for rising to the challenge of being great. Thank you families for holding hands, wiping tears, studying alongside your students. And again, thank you teachers for pouring out your knowledge and your time to put on the circus show that keep your classes engaged day after day. Your paperwork, so much more. It's the combination of all of us, the students, the families, the teachers. We all work together to bask in this sweet moment. Seniors, I hope this evening of celebration is one that you can reflect on in the future. Some of you are headed off to college, some to the military, some straight to a career. Regardless of where your path leads you, I promise you that you're going to have a moment where you're just not sure of yourself, where you're going to sit back and ask, can I really do this? Can I really pull it off? And it doesn't matter if you're asking this question on your first day at campus or right before that big interview, it's going to happen. And I hope this ceremony is just one of the many things that you can reflect on and it provides an example of your capability, of your perseverance, and of your continued support system. Clearly, you've mastered a number of these traits or you wouldn't be here tonight. I hope this night, this celebration of your hard work and how each of these people care about you can carry you through those moments of self-doubt because we, your peers, your parents, your families, your teachers, and your administration, we believe in you. We believe that you're going to go forth and do amazing things. So without further ado, we're going to get this fun celebration started. Tonight, you're going to hear from some staff members of FHS, and they're going to share with you what makes you so special to them. Soak it in, be proud, and know that you class of 2020, our one extraordinary class. Good evening, my name is Dr. Hammond. I am here on this highly unusual night to represent the science department it is my honor to represent to to introduce the top science student in the class of 2020. The student we selected in, in the science department to have this honor is Jaime Garcia. Jaime has been a, a wonderful student for four years, having participated in a wide variety of science classes. He 
He took, of course, the, uh, the, the uh, biology and chemistry classes that, that all students need to take. And then beyond that, he, he, he studied physical sciences, physics, and um, environmental science, as well as biology areas and, and genetics. So he has a wide uh, range of, of class selections that he took. And one of the hallmarks of, of Jaime's presence in all of these classes has been it was his leadership in showing the uh, other students in the class how to get through some of their struggles and in addition to that he is always has always been on time with his uh, with his work and working diligently at all times and he, he, went, he ended up with wonderful grades in all of the classes so and even now when we are on this uh, learning from home bit where we can't get to get together with our classes. Uh, he's still one of the one of the students, uh, even as a senior, who is uh, who's diligently putting in all of his uh, effort to to have a successful class. And I think ultimately to learn is his goal uh, more so than uh, more so than uh, simply achieving grades. And so it's with great pleasure and. Uh, with, uh, with great admiration that I introduce Jaime Garcia. Good evening. My name is Richard Salee, the Telecommunications Director at Frankfurt High School. This is my third year in this position and every year it is very difficult to name the most outstanding TCOM senior of the year. This year has been the most difficult. I consider multiple categories when making this decision. The student's performance as talent, work as a director, the ability to know and operate our equipment, professionalism, and new this year, work in sports productions and our partnership with the ISC Sports Network. When the pandemic started, I had three students in the running for this year's award. As we transitioned into these difficult times, one of them rose to all the new challenges. She had the same stresses that all of our seniors were facing. The loss of her last few months of high school, the loss of multiple ceremonies, and so much more. During these uncertain times, she continued to work hard and excel in broadcasting. Was it easy? I know that it was not. I know from one of her projects that she was dealing with many difficult emotions like many of her classmates. When thinking of Abby Plumback in these difficult times, I think of an Oprah Winfrey quote. Challenges are gifts that force us to search for a new center of gravity. Don't fight them, just find a different way to stand. I believe that Abby has found a different way to stand in these difficult times, and she sets an example for all hot dogs. I was lucky to have Abby this year for both the morning announcements and most of our live sports productions. During this time with Abby, I recall multiple conversations about her future. Earlier this year, she was accepted to Ball State University to continue learning about broadcasting. A few of our professional broadcasting friends and I tried to encourage her to commit to Ball State because of their outstanding PECOM department, but she was still unsure. She wanted to hold out for something better, something that she has always wanted. Abby wanted to be a Boilermaker. I was so excited to hear that Abby was accepted to Purdue University, where she will be majoring in mass communications. Congratulations, Abby, on this award. It is well-deserved, and good luck at Purdue. They're lucky to have you. Madison Rochelle Myers, or just Rochelle, as we call her in the theater, when you look for someone to represent your department, it's not always easy. But when it comes to these awards, I mean, that's really what you're doing. You're looking at all the seniors and you're saying, this is the face of our department. Now to say Rochelle was pretty busy her senior year, that would be an understatement. I mean, she was in cheer, dance, walk-ons, show choir, hooligans, and of course, theater. If it involved performing, she was somehow a part of it. 
She would even help out backstage when she was needed. Now, although budgeting her time was not always her strength, she was always there for whatever group needed her whenever they needed her. So if it meant cheering for the first half of the game, change, dance at halftime, change again, come to the theater, tech a musical number, then change again and finish cheering the second half of the game, she would do it. Now this, however, was probably not ideal situation for myself or her coaches, but when you have someone as talented and as important to you as Rochelle, you find a way to make it happen. The one thing that I will always remember about her is that she never quit. I mean, every year I have freshmen that audition and they think that they are guaranteed a role or they just expect to be cast. And sometimes you get those kids that are just interested. They wanna give it a try, see what happens. But when it doesn't work out their way, they never try again, they quit. Now, I don't know which of these groups that Rochelle fits into, but I do know that her freshman year, she wasn't cast, but it didn't stop her from trying again. She kept with it, and eventually she found her way into multiple roles up here on this stage. She played everything from the kid next door to the crazy grandma. Now, she may not have always gotten the role that she wanted, but that never stopped her from giving it all that she had. And I will always be appreciative of her positive and never quit mentality. Now, next year, when she has moved on, I will greatly miss her leadership, her positive attitude, and her presence on this stage. I'll even miss those moments when she would look at me as though I was the most annoying person in the world. I'm sure her parents have seen that look many a time. But Rochelle, I just wanna say good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you and congratulations. My name is Mary Brandstetter, and I am the department chair for Family and Consumer Sciences. Taylor has taken several facts classes over the years, in fact, eight. I've had the honor of teaching her for six of those. I first had Taylor as a junior in my culinary arts class. She loved me so much that she subjected herself to me five more times over the next two years. As a senior, I had her in three classes, and although she can be a quiet girl, we often banter back and forth with each other and are able to joke around. She is a happy, kind, hardworking student. She is very easygoing and adaptable in any situation. One of the things I admire about Taylor is that whatever you give her to do, she does it without complaint. The simple fact that she put up with me as her teacher six times is enough to give her an award. All joking aside, she is an amazing young woman who will be successful at whatever she puts her mind to. It is my honor and privilege to present the Family and Consumer Sciences Department Award to Taylor Bailey. I am glad that I could be a part of her life journey and I wish her the best of luck with her future. I'm so excited to present to you this evening the English Department Award winner, Miss Haley Webb. Haley has been a remarkable English student for our department over the last four years. She has taken all honors and AP classes and she has aced all eight credits. Um, also, I believe she took a trimester of the cauldron and she finished her trimester deadline in two weeks flat. Um, don't be fooled by her quiet facade because behind it, I've learned this year, is just a hurricane of ideas. And I've found that she's usually just waiting, biding her time before she can bring the heat down on a conversation. Robert Frost once said, education is the ability to listen to anything without losing your temper or your confidence. I think of Haley when I hear these words because over the last four years, she has come along with a group that has a lot of strong opinions and they love to debate and never once have I seen her lose herself, her confidence or her morals or values. Um, she just stays steady and she likes to just chime in when she can really make her point known. 
um, I would actually say that her confidence has grown over the last four years. Her confidence in her writing has just been tremendous this year. It's been a really fun getting to teach her and see her grow. Haley, I think that you are to our AP literature class as the sage archetype is to literature. So here's what a sage is to literature. The sage is deeply intelligent and possesses a large pool of knowledge. The sage believes in learning being a lifelong journey. The sage is immensely curious when it comes to learning new things and skills. The sage learns about facts, but listens to his or her own to intuition. And finally, the sage absolutely loves reading of any sort. And so Haley, I thought that described you perfectly. You love reading, you love learning, you love giving out that knowledge and that opinion when it's needed. And that is why we chose you as our English department recipient. Congratulations. Sheila Longoria es la estudiante sobresaliente del Departamento de Lenguas Extranjeras para 2020. Ella ha sido una estudiante dedicada durante su tiempo aquí en Frankfurt High School. Ha tomado varias clases de español en sus cuatro años y siempre ha sido un estudiante modelo. Su personalidad y espíritu han enriquecido las experiencias de mí y de los otros estudiantes. Los padres de Sheila deben estar orgullosos de ella y de todo lo que ha hecho en sus estudios. Yo le deseo todo lo mejor en el futuro y la voy a extrañar mucho el año que viene. Sheila Longoria is this year's outstanding foreign language student. She's been a dedicated student during her time here at Frankfurt High School. She's taken various Spanish classes during her four years, even an independent study in Spanish for this year. She's always been a model student. Her personality and spirit have enriched my experience and her classmates. Shayla's parents should be very proud of her and all of her accomplishments in her foreign language classes. I wish her all the best in the future. We'll miss her a lot next year. My name is Jason Hutton, and I'm the band director at Frankfurt High School. And I'm here today on behalf of our music department, including the choir director, Matt Denniston, and our orchestra teacher, Carolyn Stalkep, to present our 2020 music department award winner, Caitlin Douglas. Caitlin has been a member of the Frankfurt Hot Dog Band for the past four years. During that time, Caitlin sh has shown that she is a talented leader and a driven and caring student. She has become one of the best students that I have ever had the pleasure to have in class. Caitlin did an outstanding job as the drum major of the hot dog band this year. She leads by setting the best possible example in many activities at FHS. As an outstanding tenor saxophone player, she participated in 4-H band, all region, all district, and the Indiana State University All-Star Band. She also participated in the IMEA State Honor Band. She has been to ISMA State Solo and Ensemble twice, earning gold medals. She has also been to all district solo and ensemble for the past four years. She's performed as a member of our pit ensemble for the FHS musicals, and she's been involved in the Fortissimo show choir. She's been involved in dance, theater, hooligans improv troupe, and sheltered reality percussion ensemble through her church. Throughout these activities, Caitlin is on time, she's smart, and she is musical, which are some of the best aspects of an outstanding leader. Caitlin is a driven student. 
Caitlin wants to be the best, and in my opinion, she is one of the best. She showed this when she took many of the elements that she has learned in band as a performer and a leader to create her own band, Bama and the Bamas. Now, that's just me speaking there. She would never say Bama and the Bamas is her own band, but she was definitely the leader that put that band together. This was a small instrumental ensemble that brought a ton of joy to the members of the Frankfurt community, performing as the closing act for our annual talent show, Big Broadcast, for the past two years. And they did an outstanding job. The crowd went crazy. It was awesome. I was so proud. Caitlin arranged the music. She created the dance moves, t-shirt design, and brought the group to life. Seeing Caitlin lead this ensemble to great heights was one of my proudest moments as a teacher, even though I had nothing to do with it. Caitlin cares. As a drum major this year, I have seen Caitlin filled with joy and filled with tears. Although it breaks my heart to see her cry, if something went in with the band didn't go exactly right, I know it was just because she cares so much. She cares about people and wants them to be happy. She cares about me and would always ask if I'm okay. And her doing that would make me feel good. It is because of her talented leadership, her motivation and her caring personality that Caitlin has been awarded the FHS Music Department Award for 2020. Congratulations, Caitlin Douglas. We are so proud of you. The 2020 Career and Technical Education Department Award goes to Samantha Sharp. I had Samantha as a sophomore in my intro to construction class and she always tried to do her best. One, on one of the projects, the students had the freedom to finish it with the stain or paint of their choice. Using her creativity and her interest in golf, she painted a scene of golf hole, tee to green, on her project. She attended the first year of our gotcha program, Girls Only Technical Camp, Hands-On Activities, the previous summer, and got involved with all the activities that included building a shed at the construction shop, working on cars in the automotive shop, and working with metal and welders in the welding shop. As a senior, she has been in my welding class and has learned many things about the welding process as well as gaining an OSHA 10 certification. In addition to her classroom activities, she has been a member of the Frankfurt High School girls golf team for three years, as well as an FHS student ambassador. For half of her school day as a junior and senior, she has been part of the building trades program and has built a passion for the construction industry. Samantha plans to attend Ivy Tech Fort Wayne for construction management. In this program, she'll be able to expand upon her interests that she developed within our classes here at Frankfurt High School. As a department, we hope that Samantha will take the life skills she has learned in our classes and others here at Frankfurt High School and apply them as a positive citizen throughout her life. We would like to wish her further success after graduation. Congratulations, Samantha Sharp. Mrs. Schaefer, and I'm here to introduce the Journalism Award recipient. Most people would recognize Lathan from his work in HDTV, but what you didn't know is Lathan has been an integral part of the yearbook and publication staff for the last couple of years. Lathan is what I would call a quiet leader. He's not one to relish getting in front of the room to lead a brainstorming discussion but he does it because that's what is needed. Lathan has spent the last couple years being that integral part of the yearbook staff. Second trimester in particular this year, Lathan has really worked on making sure that we made our deadlines. I can't tell you the number of times that he has come up to me and said, what can I do next? And ultimately I give him a task and it's finished. And I can't thank him enough for those efforts. And so I can't wait to be able for him to receive 
his 2019-2020 Cauldron Yearbook. The yearbook staff and I wish Lathan the best of luck for next year. Grand Bishop. The business department comprised of Kathy Summers and myself had many lengthy email conversations about various business and or marketing students this year. The class of 2020 has many strong business minded students. It is with great honor to present Yuri Diana Valdez Mejia with this year's outstanding senior business department award. Yuri has spent a lot of time in the business hallway the past three years as Yuri has taken well over 30,000 hours of business and marketing classes. That's eight trimesters for those of you doing mental math. Yuri's a hardworking student, not a student who raises her hand to answer every question, more like a student who ponders deep and thought the questions, then follows up with her own questions later for a deeper understanding. She has an excellent work ethic, no matter the situation, even obstacles that she is unexpectedly faced with, she handles, she handles herself with class. Many seniors can remember their first day of e-learning, probably quite vividly. I'll give you the highlights of Yuri's first day of e-learning. She woke to her alarm at 8 a.m. She did her track and field workout at the Y, prepared lunch, as well as she worked with her sister on their schoolwork in their living room. After they'd finished their schoolwork, they spent the rest of the day cleaning the house until their parents returned home. I was quite impressed. Surprised? No. You see, Yuri chooses to operate like a clock. She is structured, helping her to finesse her time management skills. She's responsible. The only student I presently have in class who is submitting e-learning assignments before the due date. Now, many of you know that Yuri is in DECA. Actually, this is her second year in DECA. Her involvement by choice and otherwise has escalated during her senior year. Not only did she compete at district competition, attend Purdue University's Frankfurt DECA sales workshop in which she did a mock sales presentation to Purdue students, not something she wanted to do, but thoroughly enjoyed the experience once it was all over. So how do I know? Well, I asked her on her way to lunch and her face just lit up and a huge smile crossed her face and she said, I really liked it. I was pleased as she did something out of her comfort zone with an open mind and truly valued the experience. Also during Yuri's senior year, she traveled to New York City with her fashion class for one epic field trip. I don't know if her track and field training prepared her for all the walking that we did or all the pigeons. Lastly, Yuri has been instrumental in making DECA Backpack Buddies logistics run smoothly this year. Yuri was selected as human resource manager in which she scheduled students to work DECA cookies as well as scheduled seniors to deliver weekly buddy bags to the elementaries as well as the middle school. Sounds easy enough, right? No. Sometimes students are absent from school. So who's gonna make sure that those weekend buddy bags get delivered? Yuri. During school, I would send her a message indicating a certain student or students were absent, and she would reply, I know Mrs. Bishop, they have already communicated with me, and I'm working to change the delivery schedule now. Can you guess how many delivery debacles we had this year? Zero. You cannot imagine the relief Yuri provided me. At certain times, she afforded me the luxury of allowing me to do my job, teach, while she stepped up and did her job. In closing, I would like to share with all of you, Yuri also received the 2020 Clinton County Career and Technical Education Marketing Award. Very deserving. Yuri, we wish you good luck as you work towards earning a business degree from Indiana University Kokomo. Congratulations on being this year's Business Department Award recipient. Hello, 
class of 2020 seniors and families. I'm Elena Isgrig, and I have the pleasure of taking a few minutes to speak on behalf of the Social Studies Award recipient, Daniel Mejia Cervantes. I first met Daniel when he was a junior and a student in my Honors U.S. History class. And right away, I could tell that Daniel was a really quiet student. However, just because he was quiet did not mean that he went unnoticed. In fact, within just a few short class days, I realized that Daniel really seemed to like history. And not only did he like history, but he also really knew the content. During whole group participation activities, um, Daniel nearly always knew the correct answer. When playing competitive review games and preparations for upcoming tests, Daniel was nearly always one of the leading scorers. His classmates soon picked up on his history skills and would ask him to review with them prior to tests and quizzes. Daniel's work even became a measuring stick that I use as one of the ways to assess my own teaching. If Daniel scored well on a quiz, I felt more confident that I had taught that lesson really well. If, if he didn't, then I knew that I might need to reassess my instruction. As a senior, Daniel continued his excellence in social studies courses. Mr. Seymour reports that while Daniel is quiet, he is also confident in his own abilities and lets his work speak for him. Daniel earned a nearly perfect score on the government exam, which again demonstrates his caliber in the social studies classroom. Mr. Seymour also shared that Daniel is a hard worker and often helped his classmates after his own work was finished. While I'm proud of Daniel's performance in, social, in his social studies courses, my favorite memories of him as a student are not centered around his ability to recognize the historical significance of events or recount accomplishments of particular presidents. Um, in my classroom, Daniel happened to sit next to my teacher desk, and this gave me the opportunity to get to know him a little bit better. Thus, my favorite memories of him are the numerous conversations we had about topics such as his job, his future plans, his love of soccer, um, and it was during these conversations that I learned that Daniel might want to study history in college and maybe even become a social studies teacher. Now, Daniel, I'm not sure now what you wish to pursue in the future, but I think a degree in history or even political science might be the perfect fit. On behalf of the social studies department, I want to offer you our heartfelt congratulations and best wishes for your very promising future. Hi, I'm Jared Jagger, um, math teacher, and I would like to um, give the math department award to Johnny Lopez Regalado. Uh, I've enjoyed working with Johnny in pre-calculus over the past year, and I would like to begin with a quote from Mr. Dudley, who is also a math teacher that has had Johnny uh, in the classroom and also as part of uh, baseball for one year. And Mr. Dudley said that Johnny shows up every day ready to go and does his job. And that is uh, really a quote that um, makes me think about my experience with Johnny in the classroom as well. Johnny came into pre-calculus this last year, uh, did his job every day. He was always ready to go. Um, and even in a couple situations where uh, we were having a test that day and he had been absent, uh, was always just ready to, to go ahead and take the test and, and had done his job in being ready for class and, and being prepared. Uh, and in situations where Johnny ha was confused about anything and needed help, he was always willing to ask questions and even came in after school a couple times to get some extra help from me. Uh, it was just very pleasant to work with in the classroom. So I really appreciate uh, everything that uh, Johnny did in my pre-calculus class over the past year, and I would like to uh, wish him the best of luck uh, in any future endeavors. Hi, my name is Mr. Kniff and I have the honor to speak on behalf of NAS Juarez. I have known NAS for two years and all I can say is what a phenomenal person NAS is. NAS is a great role model, a great friend, and a hardworking student. NAS, congratulations on 
being a graduate from Frankfurt High School this year. As you continue on in your journey, I want you to remember two things. Number one is that no matter what, as long as you have a dream and a goal, nothing can stand in your way. And number two is that you will always have friends here at Frankfurt High School. Naz, congratulations on being a 2020 graduate at Frankfurt High School. Hey everybody, in case you have forgotten, I'm Mr. Potts and I'm the physical education department head. And I'm here today to present the prestigious physical education award. The winner this year is Liz Barriga, the daughter of Edgardo Rodriguez and Florinda Barriga. Um, and Liz, was among a, a really good group of students that, that each deserved to win this award. But there were just a few things that separated uh, Liz from the rest. Liz was uh, a two-year participant in band and soccer and a four-year participant in track. Um, Liz was someone, when I talked to Mr. Wayne Scott, who runs the summer weights for the female athletes, um, I remember at the start of the summer, Mr. Wayne Scott texted me and said, hey, do you know anything about this, this Liz? Have you ever had her in class? And I said, oh, man, you are going to love her. She works really hard. And... Um, Mr. Wayne Scott told me that she would come to Summer Waits and bring her younger brother with her. And we're talking about someone that is her brother, maybe kindergarten age or less. And so she needed to bring him with her to come to Summer Waits. She would bring her phone and, and let him play games and he would kind of follow her around some of her weights and occasionally she would have to leave, take him to the restroom. But she was committed to being there and being in summer weights to, to improve herself. Um, Mr. Field, who is the girls soccer coach, told me that he was amazed at the improvement Liz made in soccer based on her commitment to summer weights and APC. And he thought that the added strength that she gained kind of gave her a um, more confidence and maybe a little swagger on the soccer field. Um, and he was um, really pleased with how hard she worked. I had Liz in APC and she was what some people might refer to as one of those silent assassins. Um, she would come to class, bubbly, you know, she had a smile on her face, really friendly. Um, and it was legit. It wasn't fake. She was really friendly, respectful student. And then at APC, she was always outgoing and willing to work with other people and cooperate and encourage them, which is vital in APC based on the equipment we have and the room and space we have. You have to be able to work with other people uh, cooperatively. She was great at that. Um, but the other side of it was when I turned on the clock for a workout, Friendships were out the window. I mean, it was move or get out of the way because I'm coming through. That's the way she operated. So she became this other person when the workout started. So Liz would finish workouts and she kind of, like Mr. Field said, she kind of had this swagger where she would... Um, come up to me and look at me. She had that look in her eye like, 
Is that all you got? Is that all you got, Pops? Is that it? And I kind of like that feisty attitude. So I appreciate how hard you've worked, Liz. Uh, I'm proud of how much you've accomplished. I know you're going to be successful. I know you're going to Ivy Tech. And whatever the future holds for you, I'm sure um, there's nothing but success ahead of you. Hey, give me a virtual fist bump. That's right. Go get them, Liz. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. If you're like me during every pandemic, I just like to get out, find some alone time, do a little painting. Hi, I'm Troy Clark, one half of the dynamic duo that is your Frankfurt High School Art Department. I'm here today to present this year's Senior Art Award winner to Miss Sydney Pearson. Some of you may be asking, why Sydney Pearson? And to answer that question, I'm reminded something profound NBA superstar Russell Westbrook once said, and that was, I say, why not to everything? Literally. But to answer your question fully, here are just a few reasons why Sydney Piercy is your Senior Art Award winner. One, she is incredibly artistic, and that helps. Two, she is dedicated to her craft. Once going to the depths of Wildcat Creek to retrieve sticks for her then current project. Three, over four years, she has attended and completed every class that I offer, a feat that I'm not sure I have even accomplished. Four, she is personal and extremely helpful to anyone and everyone around her. But most importantly, whether she gets it or not, she will always laugh at my jokes and that just makes her polite. In all seriousness, congratulations, Cindy. Miss you and good luck. I would like to speak on behalf of senior class president, Crystal Gomez. Crystal has been in my orchestra class all three years that I've been teaching at Frankfurt. She's an outstanding student and she's a wonderful person. She volunteers to help with everything in the class. She participates in all the activities she can possibly schedule and she helps other students in the class. Besides being a very, very good violinist, she's also a great leader. Crystal and her sister Giselle, I would say, have really been the backbone of our orchestra class this year, lending support and unifying the group. I know Crystal's going to be a great college student as well, and I wish her all the luck in the world as she heads off to Purdue, the Cranert School of Management. Hello, my name is Jason Hutton and I'm the band director at Frankfurt High School. And tonight I have the honor of introducing the class of 2020's vice president, Riley Grasham. I've had the pleasure of getting to know Riley for the past six years from the time he was in sixth grade. During that time, he has shown me that he's an outstanding percussionist and a great student. My fondest memories of Riley include the many outstanding percussion ensembles that he's been involved in throughout his time in band at Big Broadcast. And this year, when for the first time in a very long time, we took a group one percussion ensemble called Mo Java to Isma State Solon Ensemble. And he was a real leader during that time for, for Solon Ensemble. And he was a, a great leader during basketball season this year with the pep band. He really stepped up. 
Riley participated in many sports as well as band. I know he participated in basketball. He played tennis. And as far as cross country, Mr. Wayne Scott uh, put on Facebook a great tale of when uh, Riley was going into high school between eighth grade and high school. And he and Mr. Wayne Scott were somehow running together. And Wayne Scott was ahead and he, he thought he had Riley, but at the very end, Riley just said enough of that. And he kicked it in and uh, apparently uh, ran right past Mr. Wayne Scott. So I know the feeling, I'm not a very good runner, uh, but I'm sure Wayne Scott's way better than I am. But anyway, Riley is a great athlete and he's a great uh, band student and he's a great student in general. I would always see Riley with a humongous book, some of the biggest books that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Riley would read them like it was nothing. Uh, he participated in Battle of the Books, and I loved seeing him on HDTV. In fact, uh, I watched recently his Bird Watching with Riley episode. And although I did watch Riley sit outside and I heard birds, I didn't see any. So Riley, I, I don't know, did you see any birds on your bird watching episode? I, I feel like I was watching Riley watch the birds, but uh, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss that. Uh, Riley plans to attend the Purdue University Honors College to major in English, and he hopes to pursue law, education, or journalism. Good luck as a boiler, Riley. We will miss you. Justin Seymour. I teach government history and psychology at Frankfurt High School and today I want to honor Liz Yvette Martinez. Liz is perhaps one of the most underappreciated leaders in the class of 2020. That's because she doesn't speak much. She instead lets her work ethic and her care for others speak volumes about her character. Aside from being the treasurer of the senior class and leading the class of 2020 in that respect, She's been a joy to have in the classroom, personally for me. She's the kind of student that I know when she leaves Frankfurt High School, all of her teachers are gonna be happy to take a little bit of credit for the success that she's almost certain to have. Uh, and Liz fits perfectly in her position as treasurer because it's not a glamorous title in treasurer, but it's perhaps one of the most important and with the most responsibility. And that shows the kind of trust that the class of 2020 has in Liz. And she knows that by taking that responsibility on, she's as treasurer, she's not going to receive a ton of praise and credit for it. But now it is her time to get that praise that she deserves. So it, it has been my pleasure and honor to speak on behalf of Liz Yvette Martinez who I'm certain will make us all in the Frankfurt community uh, proud in the years ahead. Thank you. Haley Campbell is a truly remarkable young woman. I still have this memory of her when she was an eighth grader with Harry Potter books or homework in her lap during middle school swim meets. Dedicated to the sport and her academics even since then. Though I've never had Haley in any of my classes, I was her swim coach, her travel buddy, and always a fan in the audience of any play, musical, and choir performance. Five years later, my memories of her and with her fill my heart with happiness especially those memories made outside the country. Did you know that Haley once had a little green tree frog jump on her face during a night hike? <laughs> or that all the small school children we visited in Costa Rica absolutely adored her? I also once watched her learn to make corn tortillas from scratch, though she did get a little frustrated because it didn't come easily. <laughs> Most are lucky to have brains or brawn. Haley is not just lucky to have both, but deserving, because she earned them by working hard. Over the past four years at FHS, 
Haley has proved to be a high achieving student, a talented performer, a skilled swimmer, a charismatic leader, a passionate world traveler, and an overall inspiring young person. Man, that girl is nonstop. The future looks brighter with Haley Campbell taking charge, and I'm excited to see what happens. Tyra Douglas was not the star of the basketball team, but she could have been. Tyra Douglas was never the lead in the high school play, but she could have been. Tyra Douglas was never a ninja master, training those that came after her to be mighty young ninja warriors, but she could have been. Where am I going with this, you ask? Tyra is the kind of person that can achieve anything that she puts her mind to. Now, some of you may be sitting out there asking yourself, well, who is Tyra Douglas? Heck, she might even have a few classmates that had to look her name up when they saw that her name was on the graduation list. Now, am I saying all this because Kyra has underachieved or that Kyra didn't work hard enough? I mean, she's in the top 10 of her class. I think that speaks for itself. I remember when I first had Kyra in class, it was basic tech theater. She was quiet, but she always worked hard and she always knew the answer when she was called on. Kyra stood out in class, and definitely not because she wanted to, but I remember telling her how much I appreciated her as a student and that I was interested in her working on the plays backstage. Now, her response, of course, was, well, do I have to get on stage? Because I, I don't want to get on the stage. My dream was to mold her into the stage manager and, well, to put her in charge of the whole darn thing. But instead, she settled for taking my advanced tech class and called it a day. Kyra does things her way. And for someone like Kyra, I hope she always does. Now, normally on this night, the person being honored would stand up here on the stage in front of 200 and so people. But I don't know how she managed it, but somehow she managed to dodge standing up on this stage one more time. That girl is good. So who is Kyra Douglas? She's a bright, talented artist and a great friend for those lucky enough to really get to know her. Oh, she's also in the top 10 of her class. I mean, that's not too shabby. Kyra, I know you're out there hating every minute of this as you watch it, but sometimes you just gotta pull yourself a tall glass of, su of success and drink it in. Kyra, I just wanna say congratulations and please never stop being you. Hello, my name is Mr. Isaac Field, and I've been a teacher and coach here at Frankfurt High School for five years now. And this is the second time that I've had the privilege and honor to present one of our top 10 seniors. While the first time was marred by an allergy flare-up, the one positive to this e-learning into the school year is that I've not had to go outside and deal with my allergies. So I get to sound a lot better while we are honoring our seniors. Anyway, that's enough about me. It's time to introduce our top 10 student. All right, I'm here to introduce Adamaris Rosales. Wait, oh, Aris Beth Rosales, oh, oops. I was wondering why they wanted me to do a speech for a freshman, that seemed really premature. So Aris Beth, okay, I think I can make this work. All joking aside, um, I probably made this mistake at least 72 times this past soccer season. And the worst part of it is that they're not even the most look-alike siblings that I've ever had the privilege of coaching. Um, I would almost always get a look from them that almost always said, hey, you really mistaken me for my sister again. Um, so appropriate that I make that joke here. All right, so Aris Beth was a member of the Lady Hot Dog Soccer Program for two seasons. And during that time, she was one of our most hardworking athletes, both on the field and in the classroom. Clearly, since the purpose of this speech is to celebrate her academic accomplishments. Now, the crazy thing about presenting her for an academic achievement is that I've never had Aris Beth in class. 
All right. So for someone that teaches freshmen, juniors, and seniors, it's pretty impressive to avoid having me in a science class, especially considering how many science courses she took while here at Frankfurt High School. Although I think she has the wool pulled over some of their eyes, all right? Because it never failed that whenever I'd go into the library with my AP environmental science class, Ars Beth and her little group for Project Lead the Way, they'd be in there and they'd be working. Yeah, they would definitely be working. But every time I'd go see what they were working on, because the Project Lead the Way stuff is really interesting, Ars Beth always had her AP stats homework out. Always. Maybe every two or three times it was Project Lead the Way, but it almost always seemed to be, be AP statistics. So, of course, that means I had to go ask Mr. Dudley on what type of student Arisbeth was in AP statistics. And Mr. Dudley, we had a nice little conversation about that, and he couldn't stop singing her praises. He was like, Arisbeth was the MVP of AP statistics this year. All right, she was the classic hardworking student. She would ask questions when she was confused. She would have me elaborate on an ex explanations, all right? She really did all the typical high level achievement that you expect students to do. But she was also the MVP because as Mr. Dudley put it, he could give a five to 10 minute explanation about some tangent in AP statistics, all right? And all the students are in the classroom copying down notes, you know, being really attentive, all right? And then he'd look at R.S. Beth, and she would just have this look on her face of utter confusion and bewilderment. Um, and he knew that when R.S. Beth had that face, that half the class had no clue what he was talking about. So besides being a high quality student and doing all the things that she needed to, the fact that she has no poker face, all right, and let Dudley understand what the actual understanding level was in the classroom is part of the reason why she was the MVP for AP statistics. All right. So since I didn't ha actually have her in a class, I'll talk about how she was on the soccer field. If I was forced to use a few words to describe R.S. Beth, it would be hardworking in a no quit attitude. Once again, I only got to coach R.S. Beth for two seasons because it took her a while to join us before her junior year. And I think those two traits came about because she wanted to make up for that lost time. All right. While she was never the first to finish a drill, she always gave it her best. And then when she finished, she encouraged her teammates that were still going. All right. She was that type of teammate that supported you until the very end. All right. And I feel like she summed up her experience with soccer at our end of season meal during her own senior speech. So this is a quote from R.S. Beth. I'm glad I had the courage to come out and play. Now, Ars Beth, I'm not the smartest coach. I'm not the smartest teacher, but I know that between hard work and a no quit attitude and the courage to try that you will make a very, very successful young woman. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and I'm sure we'll see you around in the fall when you show up to cheer on your little sister on the soccer field. But again, we wish you all the best and good luck. Hi, my name's Kia Rushton, and it's my pleasure tonight to introduce to you Chloe Roberts. Um, when Chloe asked me to speak for her this evening, I thought, wow, I've been bossing Chloe around for a really long time, and I finally get to do something back for her. So, Chloe, I hope I can find the right words <laughs> to let you know how wonderful of a young lady you are. Uh, Chloe comes to you tonight at number three in the class with well over a 4.0 GPA. Um, she is also a member of NHS and a best buddy. She has been a part of the volleyball program since she was a fifth grader. She was the group of my first fifth graders. And so she has seen me through a lot of growing pains. Well, so Chloe, I think that we can call it all a success. I was so ecstatic for you when you committed to play volleyball at IU Northwest next fall. Chloe's planning on majoring in biology with a pre-med focus, and she would like to be a medical examiner someday. Um, 
what made Chloe so stand out in my mind of the players that I've ever coached is that she never really talked to me ever. And that is until she became a sophomore in my class. And I noticed that everything I knew about Chloe as a volleyball player translated right into the classroom. So the first thing I noticed is that she's really, really coachable. On the court, if I did something or asked her to do something that didn't make a whole lot of sense because she'd never been asked to do that before, she did it anyway. And in the classroom, when I asked her to do something, read something hard or write something in a different way, she did it, even if it was uncomfortable for her. And she's always done it to the best of her ability. Um, Chloe is really thorough also. Um, you know, I think we've all seen her down in the weight room in the off season working so hard to increase her vertical and get stronger so that she could go play college volleyball. And that actually translates into the classroom so perfectly because to have over a 4.0 GPA, folks, she didn't miss any assignments. She did every summer assignment. She did every extra credit project. She was never late. Um, she's just a very, very hard worker. And finally, Chloe, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but you have grace. And you're probably wondering what I mean by that. Because yeah, you're kind of physically graceful. You're a quick jumper and your blonde hair just flows out behind you when you're going for a ball or you're sprinting. Um, yeah, you're graceful. Well, also, I'm more looking at the second definition, and that means you're really courteous and you show goodwill towards others. Um, in your interactions with your peers and your friends, and especially with your teachers and coaches, you're always so courteous and you're always so kind to others. Um, and you're very kind to yourself as well, and that has not gone unnoticed. So, Chloe, I'm going to miss you so much. Um, you know, you're so focused, intelligent, and kind. Those are things that are going to last and catapult you into your future endeavors. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this. Behind you are all of your memories, and before you are all of your dreams. Around you are all who love you, and within you is all you need. So Chloe, go set the world on fire. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Will Robbins, a physical educator, head varsity swimming and diving coach, and aquatics director at Frankfurt High School. I'm excited to present to you Haley Campbell. How do you eloquently describe a compassionate, smart, honest, and incredible person? Easily by telling you about Haley. Throughout my many years of getting to know Haley as her swim coach, teacher, and through her time as a volunteer middle school swim coach, I've noticed her hard work and dedication to all aspects of her life. She is so passionate about these aspects that it creates passion in other people around her. Her positivity is contagious as well, and let me tell you, it's hard to be positive at 5.30 a.m. for morning swim practice. But there she was. This positivity has led her to be one of the driving forces behind one of the most successful girls swimming seasons that I have ever coached. Ironically enough, she took a break from swimming her freshman year to discover other clubs and programs that interested her. It takes a brave person to step back and evaluate where you want to go in your life and make a decision to change the trajectory to attain what you truly want. I greatly admire her for being able to do that. One of my biggest pillars of coaching revolves around something called mental toughness. This is essentially moving past your mental limit, past the indicators that tell you you need to quit, and find out what you are most capable of. I believe Haley Campbell has the maturity, self-awareness, and most importantly, the mental toughness to find where her true potential lies. This is why she will always be successful in anything she chooses to do. Additionally, I've noticed her compassion for others, including myself, through difficult times, and also in times of joy and celebration. I feel as though she is quick to put herself in other people's shoes and will go out of her way to make sure those people are heard, advocated for, and know that they can rely on her 
to always be there for them. Another incredible quality of Haley Campbell is she, I, she correctly identified several characters of the popular show The Masked Singer, including the first two season winners by the second week of the show airing. This is impressive and a feat of unimaginable magnitude. I'm incredibly honored to be able to speak on her behalf. Because of this, she is one of my favorite people. I'm very thankful to spend so much time with her during class and during practice, and, I, and my coaching staff and I will greatly miss her next year. I wish Haley Campbell the best of luck, and I'm very proud of her and her accomplishments. Good morning! I had the pleasure of having Cassidy Seibert in my AP Biology class this year, and that is exactly what she would say as she walked into my classroom, accompanied by a big old smile. This ended up being one of my favorite parts of the day, mostly because that's the kind of energy I love to see in students, but also because it marked the start of fifth period, the last period of the day. Yes, Cassidy would give me a big old good morning! at approximately 1.39 p.m. I'm not exactly sure when that started or how, but it became our little inside joke. Many of her friends joined in after a while too. It's so easy to talk about Cassidy's academic accomplishments. To achieve top 10 status, she had to work tirelessly in a multitude of different courses throughout her time at FHS. She took honors classes her freshman and sophomore years before choosing to take five AP classes for the remainder of her high school career all without getting lower than a B. Before AP Biology, I had her in two upper level science courses, Zoology and Genetics. So I can stand here talking to you all day about her commitment to excellence academically, how she works hard to do her work well and in a timely manner, how she's a great advocate for herself in the classroom, how dedicated she was, etc. But that's not necessarily the part of Cassidy that I want to recognize. What truly makes Cassidy so worthy of recognition is the incredible young woman she has grown to be. She is a wonderfully well-rounded individual. Not only does she challenge herself academically and succeed, but she chose to take on other responsibilities. In addition to working at Subway and making the best sandwich that Mr. Hutton has ever had, she participated in some extracurriculars. This past fall, she was the manager of our volleyball team. Mrs. Rushton said that she was amazing. Cassidy had organized her and kept her in line. <laughs> Sounds very familiar. She has also spent all four years of high school participating in our very own hot dog band. She is known to be a great flautist, a great marcher, and an even greater student leader. Mr. Hutton has told me that she is one of the reasons we have had a great student section at many sporting events this year. This is not surprising to me. Cassidy has such a great great and contagious smile, laugh, and overall energy. Even when she does things like run into walls or trip and fall over plywood while marching at Noblesville. I'll always hold dear the trip the band and choir took to Kings Island at the end of last year, where I went as a chaperone. It was mostly Cassidy, Morgan, Maddie, and I taking on the day and enjoying life, screaming our heads off at each roller coaster we went on. It was so much fun. Teachers who get the opportunity to bond with students outside of academics are truly the lucky ones. My days without seeing Cassidy's bright and shining face are a little darker now. I will miss her a lot when she leaves for IU in Bloomington to study bilingual speech language pathology, though I know those Indiana Hoosiers will be more than lucky to have her. Cassidy, I hope you remember that you have your whole hot dog family here if you need us for anything. We love you so very much and we wish you so much luck as you embark on this new adventure. Okay, love you, bye! Good evening, I'm Andy Dudley, head of the math department, and tonight I have the honor of presenting Miss Carly Bessler. Before I begin, Carly wanted me to thank a few people. She wants to thank her parents, Waylon and Jessica Bessler, 
Jerry and Rhonda Fawcett, Joyce and Gerald Russell, Mrs. McGuire, Miss Bauer, and Mrs. Hickson. She also wants to thank her church, the FHS administration, the custodians, and most of all the lunch ladies, who she says are the real MVPs of the school. Finally, she wanted to express appreciation to her teachers, specifically Mr. Dudley, Mr. Butler, and Mr. Heyman, that had to attempt to answer her many, many, many questions that were often much more confusing than the topic itself. Now, she accidentally included one of those minis, but I don't think that would really do justice to the, to the number of questions that she would typically ask during a class. Um, don't get me wrong, inquisitive students with well thought out questions are some of the best teaching tools that teachers have access to. And it's certainly not the number or quality of Carly's questions that's the issue here. Um, it's, it's often, she takes a minute to really uh, explain her question well. She kind of speaks her own language. For instance, while discovering how to find the vertical stretch factor of a function, she would ask, do you just take what it is now over what it should have been? So if you don't know what that means, I've been teaching high school math for 18 years and I have no idea what that means. Obviously, if you're being honored at this banquet, you've achieved some amazing things in your high school career. I could fill the allotted time just describing Carly's academic resume, AP classes, straight A's, but that wouldn't even begin to do justice to the impact that she's had throughout her time here at Frankfurt High School. I asked my colleagues for the thoughts on how Carly's made an impact in their classrooms. Of course, many people commented about her incredible work ethic and sense of responsibility. Some mentioned her thoughtfulness and willingness to participate in class. We talked about how she genuinely cares about other people. One of our English teachers, Mrs. Bourne, said this, Carly was a joy to have in class and an invaluable part of our public speaking class, often sharing insights and propelling discussions on many global issues. She mentioned that Carly was the winner of the Rotary Club annual speech contest. In addition to her academic achievements, Carly's found time to get involved in a wide variety of school clubs, activities, and athletics. Mrs. Jagger, one of our special needs teachers, said that Carly's done a great job serving as an officer in the Best Buddies program. She says that she'll be greatly missed next year, especially by her buddies from this year and last. As I spoke to other people at the high school about Carly, there were a couple of common themes amongst almost all of them. The first one was Carly's toughness and her ability to overcome obstacles. Mr. Robbins, the varsity swim and diving coach, reminded me of the time Carly broke her nose after hitting it on her knee during diving warm-ups before meet. Now, just imagine how hard you have to hit yourself in the face with your own knee to break your nose. For most of us, that would have ended our diving career or at the very least suspended our season for a while. Not Carly. She went ahead and performed her dives and swam in all of the events that night with her freshly broken nose. Another common theme, maybe the one that's a little tougher to describe, is her kind of warped sense of humor. Now I'm under the impression that Carly might be really funny. Now, the reason I say might be really funny is that through three years of community class, two trimesters of Algebra II, and two trimesters of AP Statistics, I'm not sure I've ever heard Carly get all the way through the punchline of a joke without cracking herself up and becoming completely incoherent. I mean, she really likes to laugh, but that girl really likes to laugh at her own jokes. Four different teachers that I said that I should include her favorite joke about the best way to punish a rock. I was well aware of this being her favorite joke, but unfortunately, I had to look up the punchline because in her dozens of times attempting to tell this class uh, this joke just in my class, I don't think she ever finished it. And, and by the way, it's to hit rock bottom. Personally, I feel extremely fortunate that Carly was placed in my community class three years ago. She's a one-of-a-kind student working hard and getting straight A's, but that's not what sets her apart. It never seemed like it was about the grades or a competition. She just wants to do things the right way and has a genuine interest in learning. Next year, Carly's gonna attend Indiana University School of Business and plans on going to law school after that. I know that we're all excited to see her take on these new challenges and I have no doubt that she will continue to be successful.
Hello again. This time, I have the honor of introducing Esperanza Cervantes. I can honestly tell you, I was shocked when she asked me to present her. In fact, I asked her if she was sure she didn't want someone else. I'm honored that she chose me, and I had no idea how much of an impact I had made on her. Esperanza is no stranger to the facts department. In fact, she's taken eight of our courses, six of which I have had the pleasure of being her teacher. I first met her when she was a sophomore in my child development class. She was the quiet girl who never really talked much. This hasn't changed much since then. Even though she was quiet, she wasn't afraid to share her views and opinions on topics. I appreciated that about her. I have her in two classes right now, and one of the things that stands out the most to me is her optimism. She always had a smile on her face, and she never seemed to have a bad day. Through this crazy time of e-learning, I have seen her dedication to her schoolwork. When she could have gotten discouraged, she stayed strong and she always turned her assignments in. She wasn't afraid to ask questions. I know her assignments will be some of the first that I see in grade every morning, usually before its due date. Esperanza is the daughter of Brigida Cervantes. Throughout high school, Esperanza has been very involved. She participated in Key Club, SAD, Student Council, National Honor Society, and was a student ambassador. She has earned a spot in the top 10 through her dedication to her academics. She plans to get a part-time job for the summer and go to college in the fall. She hasn't decided which college for sure, but she's thinking about Indiana University Kokomo for pre-dentistry, then completing her bachelor's degree in dental hygiene at IUPUI. I know that whatever path she chooses in life, she will be successful. It is my honor and privilege to present the top 10 award to Esperanza Cervantes. She's earned it. I am glad that I could be a part of her life journey and I wish her the best of luck with her future. Hello class of 2020 seniors and families, I'm Elena Isgrig and I have the honor of speaking on behalf of one of the members of the top 10 of the class of 2020, Camden Caesar. I have had the pleasure of having Camden as a student in both my honors world history class and AP US history class. In a lot of ways, Camden is exactly what one might expect of a top 10 student. His grades are excellent. He's involved in extracurricular activities like NHS, 4-H, and DECA, and played golf. Um, he's community-minded, as illustrated by his service on the Frankfurt Future Leaders Advisory Council. However, these accomplishments, while impressive, aren't what sets Camden apart from his peers. Instead, when I think of Camden Caesar, I think of his attention to detail and meticulous work. What I've always appreciated about Camden is that every assignment from the smallest bell ringer to the largest project was completed thoroughly into the highest level. Sometimes this drive was to his own detriment and caused him undue stress, but it's also hard to fault a student who wants to perform well in the classroom and, and who wants to do things the right way. I think a large part of why Camden asked me to speak on his behalf is because he's a fellow history nerd. In fact, Camden might enjoy learning about history more than any other student that I've had in my 10 years of teaching. He appreciates all history, but especially relishes in US history and is especially passionate about the World War II era. When it came time for me to teach about World War II in AP US history class, I'm relatively certain that Camden could have taught that unit for me. As I was teaching, he would be nodding his head in agreement to the points I was emphasizing on characteristics of totalitarian rule or offering additional commentary that he knew about D-Day. Um, he would sometimes even steal my thunder because he would get so excited about whatever World War II topic was at hand that he would explain what happened next before I would even have a chance to get the words out. During some of our history themed conversations, Camden shared with me that he has a collection of historical artifacts. After our World War II unit, he asked me if he could bring in part of his collection to share with his classmates. 
I agreed, but was unprepared for what happened next. Camden brought in enough of his collection to cover five or six desktops in my classroom, as well as to fill my corner closet. Um, as he kept unpacking items to share, he informed me that this was only a portion of his collection. The best part of this memory, though, um, was watching and listening as Camden explained the various pieces of his collection to his classmates. It brought him so much joy to share his passion with them. And this experience is truly my very favorite memory of him. Camden, I want to express to you how proud I am of your many accomplishments and wish you the best of luck as you pursue a degree at either Butler, IU, or Purdue next fall. I hear that you aren't quite sure what you want to study, but may be considering an engineering degree. And I'm sure that with your analytical mind and meticulous attention to detail, that you'd have great success. However, I might suggest that you would make an excellent history museum curator, or dare I say, even a history professor specializing in, of course, World War II. Congratulations and best wishes. I'm incredibly honored to present Yasmin for this senior banquet. Yasmin is one of my community kids and we all started FHS at the same time. If you ask any of my community students, they tell you that we were not tight year one. Freshman, first year teacher don't always go together. But as the years went by, they all matured, they all grew into their personalities and Yasmin is no exception. I love seeing the wonderful young woman that she has grown into. I don't know if she remembers, but she was also a part of my very first English class. And looking back, that's probably what set her up to be top 10. These lucky students who had me as an English teacher and a community teacher, boy, they learned a lot. Our community was probably the only one that did all of the community lessons every single time. Yasmin was the student who was sweet and listened while other students who shall remain nameless would throw water bottles to the topmost windowsill of the old theater room. Yasmin has always been polite, hardworking, and she's shown a lot of initiative. I can remember her asking me to check her class rank after every single term ended and talking with her about her goals and her ambitions. When Mr. Byers and I decided our communities were going to do service learning projects, Yasmin was a part of a group that actually did their project. They had a toy drive, they got donations, they bought the toys and they gave them to the elementary school students. This drive and this willingness to get something done is what is gonna set her apart from a lot of other students and a lot of other adults. Her work ethic that she honed through her academics, her athletics and her extracurriculars is going to help her to be successful in life. Yasmin is going to IUPUI this fall to study computer science. Ever since Yasmin was a freshman and probably before I knew her, you could tell Yasmin was going to do something amazing, and it absolutely makes sense that she is going to major in computer science. I love seeing a confident young woman going into a STEM career because women belong in every career, and she's going to be a great representation. The class of 2020 is super special to me, and my community students especially. During this crazy time when everything is changing, my heart breaks because I won't be able to have that last community party where we celebrate all of their achievements. But if anyone is going to make sure that we have a celebration after all of this is over, it's going to be Yasmin and she's going to bring something that she helped her mom make. Congratulations, Yasmin. You deserve all of the wonderfulness coming your way and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. I looked up the word genius in the dictionary. I was pretty sure that I would not find my picture next to it. Well, lo and behold, I was, I was correct. Four years ago, as I looked at my community class roster, I saw the name Daniel Ehrman was on the list. Now, I was familiar with the name because I had previously worked with the sister, Lauren. But as he walked in, I knew right away he was no Lauren. He sat quietly in the green room by himself with his long flowing locks of hair half covering his face, but he didn't have that look of wonder and confusion that most freshmen have on their first day of school. No, no. 
Daniel looked like he'd been there for years. And little did I realize, well, he was just sitting there, soaking it all in like a sponge, wondering how one day he would be in control of all of this. A couple of years later, Daniel would cut his hair, now looking like a new man and apparently more aerodynamic, because I'm not sure if any of you ever saw Daniel in the hallways, but he walked with purpose, weaving his way in and out of his fellow students like a pace car making his way to the front of the pack. When Daniel asked me to speak for him, I was truly honored. And it really should be pretty easy. I mean, with the number of activities that he took part in, he was in band, National Honor Society, numerous AP classes, and of course, tech support. I mean, just to name a few. Heck, he was also, he also happens to be the 2020 Clinton County Lilly Endowment Community Scholar. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. In four years, Daniel went from that quiet kid in my community to the one that had everyone gathered around him, just wanting to be a part of his world. Daniel never wanted to stop learning. In fact, he would invent reasons just to start researching something else. After the summer of his sophomore year, he came to me and he asked if he could rewire and redesign our entire sound system in the theater. I mean, he had been doing a little research and well, he felt like he could make it a little more efficient. So two months later, he had become the teacher because we were now updated to new software that I had never used or even heard of, which made me have to go back to the books and update my own knowledge in sound design. Daniel forced me to be a better teacher and director because I knew I could never settle for just okay because I knew he would never settle for just okay. When it comes to computers, software, programming, I will never be at Daniel's level. He has a passion for it beyond most. But that being said, boy, did I love to see him struggle when he first started building scenery. Watching him learn to use a saw for the first time and other power tools, it just reminded me, hey, I am here for a reason. And although his time in the shop would be cut short this year, Daniel's carpentry skills grew every day. And I know that one day when he's accepting his Nobel Prize, I will be sitting at home watching on TV listening to my wife remind me that he was the kid that taught me how to use the new sound equipment, while quietly, I'll be sitting there, smiling, knowing that I played a part in this young man's life. Daniel Ehrman, number two in the senior class, will leave Frankfurt High School and head to IU, where he will major in computer, in computer science and probably take over that department as well. Daniel, I thank you, and man, Congratulations. Thank you for watching the 2020 Top 10 Senior Recognition Banquet. I'm Martin Hale, Assistant Principal. And I'm Trisha Hartman, Assistant Principal. We wanted to wish you congratulations on all your hard work for your four years here at Frankfurt High School. We are so proud of you and want to wish you the best in your future endeavors. Congrats, Class of 2020.